This is my air cannon. It launches all kinds of things. Apples, hot dogs, and potatoes through watermelons, to name a few. It can be operated using a blowgun or a solenoid valve, and filled using an air compressor or a high pressure bike pump. Here's what you'll need to make one. Pause the video to look everything over, and I'll leave links to all the parts in the description. Note that even Schedule 40 PVC like we're using here is designed for transporting water, not pressurized air. I'm assuming my own risks here, as you need to do as well. Stay safe. First, take your two inch pipe and cut pieces for the barrel and air chamber. You can experiment with the sizing here. My original cannon has a 20 inch barrel and a 30 inch air chamber. Cut two two and a half inch pieces from the one inch pipe. Deburr each of the cut ends with sandpaper, then loosely assemble all the PVC pieces as shown so you know how they'll fit together. Chamfer the end of the barrel with a file or bench grinder to make it easier to load potatoes and similar objects later on. Make sure your work area is well ventilated and check the label on your cement for the working and curing temperature ranges. If it's too cold, the cement may not cure properly. Working one joint at a time, prime the two mating surfaces. Allow the primer to dry, then apply cement to both surfaces and assemble the parts. Rotate the joint as you do so, then hold the pieces firmly together for 30 seconds. Wipe away any excess cement and repeat the process for each joint, then set all PVC parts aside to cure. As the cement cures, we can prepare the sprinkler valve. Remove the small plastic knob as well as the solenoid. Unscrew and remove the top piece, which I'll call the lid, being careful of the spring inside when doing so. Cut off the solenoid cavity, leaving about a quarter inch of height on the inside. Drill a 7 16 inch hole straight down in the center of the lid. You can easily find the center on the underside of the lid. Use a small drill bit at first and increase the size several times to ensure the hole is straight. Tap the hole, being careful to keep the tap straight up and down when doing so. Turn the tap clockwise one and a half turns, then counterclockwise one half turn, repeating until the hole is fully tapped. NPT taps are tapered, so stop as soon as the fully threaded section appears at the bottom of the hole. Add three wraps of Teflon tape to the male NPT coupler in a clockwise direction, then install it in the lid using a wrench. With the coupler in place, use sandpaper to rough up the surface inside the solenoid cavity, then clear out any shavings. Mix up some epoxy and completely cover the bottom of the cavity. Spread some over the knob hole, then set the sprinkler valve aside so the epoxy can cure. After 24 hours, reassemble the sprinkler valve, making sure the spring is compressed between the diaphragm and the male NPT coupler. Add five wraps of Teflon tape along the entire length of the threaded PVC adapters and screw them firmly into the sprinkler valve. The valve has an arrow that shows the correct flow direction. The arrow should point away from the air chamber towards the barrel. On the air tank end cap, mark and drill 7 16 inch holes 90 degrees apart for the pressure gauge, fill valve, and the drain valve. Be careful as you break through the inner wall so you don't drill through the opposite side. Note that the sprinkler valve will face downward during use. Make sure to arrange your drill holes appropriately to keep the fittings out of the way. Tap the holes, making sure to go just far enough for the fittings to seat properly. Shake out any loose chips, then add three wraps of Teflon tape to the gauge and valves and install them. Orient the gauge's display backwards so it can be easily read during filling. Add three wraps of Teflon tape to the exposed end of the male NPT coupler, as well as the end of the blowgun. Add the female NPT coupler to the blowgun, then install both on the male coupler. Point the blowgun towards the barrel and your air cannon is complete. Without loading a projectile, fill the air chamber to see if it has any leaks. Begin with a low pressure such as 20 psi, checking each cemented and taped joint. If you hear a leak and are having trouble determining which joint it's coming from, apply some soapy water and look for bubbles. If a cemented joint is leaking, depressurize the cannon, cut off the fitting, and replace it with a new one. If a tape joint is leaking, depressurize the cannon, unscrew the fitting, replace the tape, and reinstall the fitting. Grab some ear protection, then dry fire the cannon by squeezing the handle. Work your way up in 20 psi increments for safety. The lowest pressure rating of all my components is 160 psi. To provide a margin of safety, I never exceed 120 psi with this setup. Note that this is not a guarantee your cannon can safely hold that much pressure. You must read the labels on your own components and perform tests yourself. You can now load in your first projectile. Always make sure the cannon is depressurized when loading to make sure it does not prematurely launch anything. Start with something soft like a cloth or t-shirt, pushing it to the back of the barrel using a rod or broom handle. Pressurize the cannon to 20 psi, aim it in a safe direction, and fire. 
work your way up in 20 PSI increments to get a feel for how far it launches. Whenever you're using a new type of projectile, perform this test to help prevent damage and injury. When firing, pressing the handle firmly and quickly will improve the performance of your cannon. To fine-tune the pressure, briefly open and close the drain valve. If you need to safely depressurize the air chamber while a projectile is loaded, open the drain valve completely and check the gauge to make sure all the air has been evacuated. To operate your cannon electrically, switch the blowgun out for a solenoid valve, then add a power source. Make sure to mount the solenoid valve inlet to the male coupler. For the valves I use, the inlet is the side with the larger centered hole. While air cannons are not firearms, you should always treat them like one from a safety standpoint. Always assume your cannon is pressurized and loaded, and never aim it at anything you do not intend to hit, such as people or animals. Practice proper trigger discipline, and be aware of what's behind your target. Wear eye and ear protection when using your cannon, and store it in a safe place afterward, making sure not to rest it on the valves or pressure gauge. Have fun, be safe, and if you'd like to see all the things I've launched with my cannon, or you'd like to request something for me to launch, follow me on TikTok at Hardware Unknown. Please consider subscribing for more projects, and most importantly, thank you for watching. Well, would you look at that? You made it to the bonus section. I've got my buddy Jeff here, and he's always wanted to be an astronaut. So I'm gonna help him achieve his goals today. Gotta get those test flights in. Well, that's where we're headed. To infinity and beyond, Jeff. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Go make one.